and welcome to this episode of What a Horse, and today I have none other than Mr. Mark Farah from The Breeders with me. And Thank Mark, you for having me. Hey, I'm tickled you come. We're going we're gonna to hand out some good news and make some people happy. Some people probably be sad, but that's just That's a regular day. <laughs> it is just a regular <laughs> day. i tell you what we're going to do first. We're going to take a short pause for our sponsors because without them, Mark, we wouldn't be here. But we'll be right back after this message. Hi, it's your friend Abby at Jim Armstrong Super. Just wanted you to know KBB voted Super best overall and most trusted brand once again. ACSI also named Super number one in vehicle safety. And JD Power is also named Super number one in brand loyalty. Last but not least, they're number one in my book too. So come see me and your other friends at Jim Armstrong Subaru and see what being number one is all about. The Spring Fun Show will be held May 26th through the 28th at the Calsonic Arena in Shelbyville, Tennessee. This premiere three-night show promises to be fun and entertaining, so bring the whole family. From the time the first horse enters the ring until the last horse takes its victory pass wearing the championship class blue ribbon, you will be treated to the best the walking horse industry has to offer. Join us starting May 26th at Calsonic Arena in Shelbyville, Tennessee. For more information, call 931-684-5915. Get you a catalog from me or sit yourself in the rooms. Want everybody to know the rooms of the games we're here today? So, 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 2600 here, and then 5600 and a half. 5600. 5500. You bought a 5500. And so, 1100 mark call. Take it. Call 1100. You bought. So, so, so. You break one. Break the next one. That's the real deal, guys, right here. Opportunity is knocking right here, Andy Johnson. Here's a horse to take it home. Right at Sid is. So, so, so. You bought it. Six-time world champion in amateur and open competition, four-time amateur world grand champion, and 2019 world grand champion. Standing at stud for Joanne Dowell at Fantasy Farms in Bell Buckle, Tennessee. Call 931-389-6983 for breeding information. More of What a Horse coming up. <laughs> Welcome back. I do want to make one announcement here. Uh, the Cancer Foundation in Bedford County, Walking for Cancer will be this Saturday, April the 30th at the Champions Arena right outside Calsonic. You can contact Connie Allen at 931-684-5915. Showtime is at 5 p.m. That's good. Earlier the better. And Chad Williams will be the judge. I'm looking forward to seeing him. I want to see how he judge it. I would expect he'd do good. I would do too. He uh, he uh, uh, he's got his his way about horses, and he but he knows a good horse. 
I look for him to do very well. Uh, a lot of times, Mark, in this industry, people fall in love with their horses and, and they come to a, a spot to where they think more of them. They do a lot of people. You just <laughs> ask Virginia Stewart, you go out there and look in their front yard and it's full of horses. <laughs> yard ornaments is what they call them. But uh, Roy Wester called me and, and told me about he lost uh, one that was very dear to him. His uh, granddaughter was going to start showing it next year. It's a multi-time world champion, world grand champion, just a, a great horse, uh, a Cadillac by Jazz. Mm. And here's a tribute to that horse. Sired by Jazz Man out of a pusher mare, born April 27, 2005, a Cadillac by Jazz would prove to be a credit to his name, winning 18 first place blues and a world championship in the Tennessee Walking Horse Division before showing his true calling as a racking horse when he was purchased by Joan Wester as a present for her husband Roy in 2015. A Cadillac by Jazz would go on to win 26 first place blues. He is a four-time amateur world grand champion, five-time world champion, two-time amateur owned and trained world champion, two-time reserve world grand champion behind High Sword, the Wester's four-time world grand champion racking horse. A Cadillac by Jazz was going to be campaigned by Mackenzie Wester in the 11 under division in 2023. Described as a horse of a lifetime, he will forever be loved and missed by the Wester family. I tell you what, we have them that show till a ripe old age, and, and uh, he did. But well, Mark, I hope, you, I hope Mackenzie finds her something else. Oh, he will. I bet, I bet, they, they'll, I bet I, they're on that right I, now. I grant you, Roy Wester turned over every rock in Alabama. <laughs> <laughs> he, he loves that grandbaby. Well, and to your point on that, and just I know I know you want to get to futurity, but just to your point on that, one of the our new marketing campaign that we just rolled out at, at Tweeba is. Um, all focused on my best friend, the Tennessee walking horse. But from from young to old, I mean, it's it is hey. become it, these horses have become a lot of people's very best friends. It, it, I seen a thing today. The lady said that she really had the feeling that she needed to clean her house, so she went and saddled up her horse and and rode around till it went away. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was me when I when I was in college. The only time I'd clean my apartment is when I needed to be studying. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. You got to do something. <laughs> well, tell us, Mark, what what is happening? I know y'all y'all made some changes to the the fraternity, and I I have touched on that. But explain to the people that's watching exactly how that's going to work. So the the big thing, you know, as you and I were talking, you know, before this, you know, we all remember the fraternity in its heyday, you know, in the late '90s, early 2000s, when there mm. were 850 nominated. Um, you know, futurity nominations. And I mean, that Council Night Green would be full of, right. of futurity horses. Well, it's, it's dwindled and it's dwindled. And, you know, we moved it from, from the celebration grounds to Miller Coliseum for a while. And then in, in 2013, when the last year we were at Miller Coliseum, there was two or 403 futurity nominations. Then we moved it, we moved it back here where, where I think it should be. In 2014, that dropped to 280 futurity nominations. And it's continued to drop every single year since then. And this past year, we had um, 107. So, they, you know, David Sisk is the chairman of our Breeders Committee or vice president of our Breeders Committee. And from the very first meeting, you know, we had, I think, several things that people agreed on. We, right. you know, for the last few years, a lot of people don't realize this. I, I didn't realize this year. Um, but the only fraternity classes we had left were the Wheelands and yearlings, and then you know we split them into to Phillies and um, Colts, and so there were only four that that Wednesday night. There were 28 classes. It was a it was a good one night horse show, but only four of those were true fraternity classes. Right. And you know we wanted to get back to the true fraternity, so we talked about we want to bring two and three year olds back into it. Um, you know the problem with I think maybe while they had had kind of drifted out of it was, you know when you nominate a colt you don't know where it's going to go when it goes under saddle. Right. Is it going to be pleasure or is it going to be performance? And then, say it is performance, you don't know if it's going to be, you know, show pleasure or park performance or if it's just going to be regular performance. And then, 
if you get you know, pleasure, you could go any one of a number of ways. Right. So something we struggled with was we wanted to make sure that a futurity nominated horse could show in any division. Right. Wherever it went, you could still be in that futurity money. And we wanted more money in it. We wanted it to be in every division. We wanted two and three year olds back in. And we wanted to try to bring back some of the prestige and awareness of the futurity that, that maybe has, has gone away. Because we weren't getting a good crowd and we were doing it all there on Wednesday night and a lot of people weren't even in town yet. And um, so, you know, we've combined a lot of those classes, the two and three year olds, with existing celebration classes. And, you know, what that does is it lets us have um, more chances for people to show. Right. And it also gets some of those classes out into the big oval. And right. it gets them where there's a bigger audience for them. And, you know, the announcer can say, you know, like, you know, leave, you know this horse is leaving with the, the, high, it's the highest placing futurity horse and leaving with $10,000 or $5,000 or whatever it is. And to me, things like that are what's going to start building back the prestige. You know, this year, we don't know what to expect. We don't know if there's going to be two, in a, two nominated horses in a class or if there's going to be 20. Right. And I hope it's 20, and I hope it gets to be more and more, and they become their own classes again. But until we do, we've got to, we've got to build some excitement, and we've got to build some prestige and some mo momentum for this whole program that recognizes our breeders and, and these, these young horses. Well, everybody knows that... When you go to a horse show, the most exciting classes are the ones that's got a lot of horses in it, whether it's 12, 15, 16, 20, or 23, whatever. Those are the ones that really get people excited, and, and I can understand the, the feelings. And, but you and I had also talked, they said, well, the way that they were going to be placed, and, and I'll get you to explain it to where they, they know, is that there'd be 10 places, and what if a fraternity horse does not place in the top 10? And I, the way you explained that was, I really like, but I'd like for you to explain it to the people. Yeah, well, and, and to your point um, about the excitement of it, um, you know, that was David Sisk, our, our VP for the Breeders, that was his point all along. He's, he said, you know, if I, if I come to two-year-old stud night at the celebration. I want to see all the two-year-old studs. Yeah. And mm -hmm. so now, you know, now you will. And I, I think it'll be a, a more enjoyable fan experience too from, from that part. Um, so if the, the way that's going to work is the, there's of course going to, in a lot of these classes, there are going to be horses that are not futurity nominated. Right. And, you know, those horses may place above a futurity nominated horse, but the, the highest placing futurity nominated horse um, we'll get that first place prize money and then second place prize money and on down as, as you rank them. And like you're asking if, you know, what if they're not in the top 10 ribbons? Right. Um, chances are they're going to have a vote. Um, they're, you know, right. out of five judges, one of those judges is going to have those horses on their cards and you just look to see who ranks higher. That's um, it. You may have some ties, you may have to split the money, whatever this year. Um, but, you know, I think, I think we'll continue to improve the system. I mean, I would love to think that that's a problem, but, you know, if you look at past history, the, the, I mean, there, there's not a lot of classes at the celebration where, you know, a lot of horses go out without a ribbon. That's right. Most, most horses in most classes are, are in the ribbons. Well, there was um, one other thing that you, in this I really like. Would you rather have a ninth place ribbon with 23 horses are a first place ribbon with two horses. I mean, that makes, I mean, to me, that makes a lot of sense because of the numbers. Nobody wants to win a one horse class. That's ex exhibitions, all that is. Well, it, it is, and I, I do think that there is some satisfaction in, in you know, being, you know, in the, the top half or ninth out of, out of F23. I'll, I'll tell you, um, Charles Tischer tells this story a lot, but. Um, you know, back when, you know, you'd have several splits and, and a workout and, um, you know, more horses would leave the ring without a ribbon than got a ribbon. You know, we, we remember those days. And he, he remembers coming out of the ring. He tells the story a lot. And it, this really hits home, and I try to remember this. But, you know, coming out, somebody was on a payphone there under the grandstands, and he's walking back to the office after a long night. And, you know, and you think, you know, sometimes, like, you know, oh, it doesn't matter if it's ninth or if it's 10th or, you know, whatever. Yeah. Well, there was, a la there was a lady on the phone with her husband calling back home, 
I mean, in tears. I mean, you would have thought she'd won it all, but her biggest news was she made the workout. Yeah. She had made the workout. I don't know, I don't know if she got a ribbon, but she had made the workout. Hey, she, a lot of people. <laughs> my, my favorite thing is, is, is Ginger Williams. I, I, I met her several years ago, and she was at the barn she had showed that morning. And I said, well, how would you do? And she said, I didn't get a ribbon, but I had a fantastic ride, great ride. And that always, to me, that always struck home that that's what it was all about to her. But Russ Thompson has a saying. When he used to go back to California, of course, he didn't win everything, but he would always tell them, I had several in the top ten. <laughs> <laughs> so in the world, top ten in the world. So that, well, that is it. Well, we'll, we're going to do what we can. I mean, we, we certainly want the, the futurity. You know, one of our goals is to make it prestigious. And, and we do think putting it in front of a bigger audience and spreading it out where it's not all on one night. So, you know, almost every night during the show, we're going to be talking about the futurity. There's going to be futurity horses placing. There's going to be big money given away. And, you know, we've got, we've just, you know, we may go back to to one night again, but we've got to rebuild it first. We've got to get... We've got to get momentum. We've got to get excitement again and, and get money get in interest. it again. you got so, to get the interest in there to where people want to be a part of it. And uh, there's another, one other thing. We've got a couple more minutes where we're going to talk, but we'll talk over all this video. Is Our registrations are not where we'd really like for them to be. And that is one thing that I would like to see people change. And there's different avenues out here that our horses can sell now. That's important. But the registration, people say, well, he's a gilded, no sense. Well, I beg your pardon. If you've got if you've got that horse out for sale, especially the avenues we have now, and it, they say, well, it's a Tennessee walking horse. I can say any horse is a Tennessee walking horse. But now I got the paperwork right here. It says this one is a registered Tennessee walking horse. It's kind of like registration for your car. I mean, that's well, registered. Period. Let me, let me tell you, I, I agree, and, and don't take it for granted that um, our registration numbers. Be, of, of course, you know we'd like to see them pick up, but compared to a lot of other breeds, we're yeah, we're yeah, got are, very solid numbers. Oh, and oh the, yeah. The number of stallions that are breeding, the number of mares that are bred. Um, in a year is, is really good compared to a lot of breeds. And um, we're very thankful that there is still a value in, in having those registration papers. Well, yes, there is. And being a registered Tennessee walking horse. Always will be value in the registration part of it. I believe we're going to go to the Southern Championship and show a few victory passes. But this, as we show these victory passes, we can talk about the avenues out here. That right there is a Sky's Masterpiece in Tanner Burks for Eddie Guthrie, your two-year-old Marion Gildan winner. When people now, uh, some of these auction sites that they've got, especially on uh, the internet, walking horses are selling for a high dollar. And uh, the registration for them, that's why if, and correct me if I'm wrong, if you do not register, if you wait to register your horse, it costs a little bit more. It does. It does. You need to, the, the sooner you register it, the, the cheaper it's going to be. Um, and, and seeing the, you know, Tanner's horse there, the, there's a lot of talk and momentum, you know, the celebration adding that two-year-old Mare World Grand Championship this year. And, you know, we've had, you know, we've had a Mare incentive the last few years in the fraternity. And I look for that to continue, and I look for it to become a lot more of an incentive, let's say. Oh, yeah, I'd love to see year. that mare, but <laughs> here's a little shady in Edgar Abernathy there for Ray Shoemate. And here is self-made money and Jessica Mass for Jack Pertle. Perkle. Oh, Jack tickled death with this horse. He's been in this a long time. Oh, he has, he has. He's a good one. Well, I'll tell you what I look at. If, we know that we've got all these avenues for our horse. Of course, everybody wants that performance horse, but it may not go performance. It, it may go flat shot like this, which these are performance horses too. And then it may end up as a trail horse or obstacle horse. 
But that paper that says it is a registered Tennessee walking horse is well worth its weight, believe me. Habanero Picante and Kimberly Walden to the Blue in the Country Pleasure Amateur Class. So to me, that's that alone should drive up because I believe we're where are we at now in registrations, fifth or fourth? Fifth. Fifth. Well, I'd like to. I'm, I'm greedy. I want to be <laughs> first, second, third, fourth. I'd love to see us go up from fifth. Yeah. That, that, that's that was my whole reason for bringing up the registrations was to to get more horses registered. Here's Sister Sledge. I'm going to tell you, that horse right there was one of the best down there that I saw. That, that's just a good mare. When it says fan favorite on there, what does that yep. mean? That means a lot of people screaming and yelling for it. Is that so you determine that? Yeah, right. I do. Or just by listening to people yeah. talk, and you, you go around and people will talk to you yeah. about how much they like this one. Right there, that little man. You uh, know, you that's know the a main hard riding kid hey, right you there. You know the main thing they said about him? They said, that kid rides like a trainer. Uh, <laughs> and he does. I mean, he sits up there, he's all business. The medalist in Eli Cunningham. I love to watch these kids ride, especially the ones that really get into it. And he does now. I mean, he he sits there and gets it done. I mean, we need more of them, but we oh, we yeah. certainly got some good riding kids right now. Right there is Cowboy Defender and Mackenzie Lawrence. JD and Ginger were just screaming, yelling, hollering, going ballistic down there. Uh, Uh, we we do reserve ads, uh, fan favorite ads. Okay. Our main thing, Mark, is we put all these up on Facebook and YouTube, and the, the people can share them. Oh, that's cool. Uh, they oh, can just oh, they can just tag them, show them to everybody. Jamie McKenzie both there. Well, she beat him. <laughs> Gee, he was in that glass too. <laughs> here's here, amateur pony. Here, here's a good thing about this horse. This Tennessee walking horse, buddy, he won the four-year-old competition. He came back in the amateur and was reserved in the amateur competition the next night. That horse got a double inspection from the USDA. And here's quite an honor in John Allen Callaway for Beth Beasley, four-year-old Marion Gildan winner. Everybody looks cold at this horse show. They're under blankets. Hey, it was it was <laughs> cold. Now it was. It was chilly down there. You go outside and you'd be blowing. It wasn't smoke, but you could tell. <laughs> and here is I am, you know, and Jake Jacobs. He made a fan. We live streamed this show, Mark, and people were saying, I like the black horse and the guy with the black jacket. <laughs> I don't think he was the only one in there, but everybody liked him. He, um, it's a good horse. I wasn't at this show, but I was at the, the Fast Spring Show, which I think you're going to talk about later, but he, his, his horses have looked good this year. Hey, he, he, Jake is a super good guy. He, uh, he, 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 his, he's more t into his daughter and making sure she has a horse, but if he buys one that, that's not suited for her, like brain power, he ends up on, on brain power. <laughs> We're gonna take a short pause for our sponsors and we will be right back. <laughs> Jim DeWin started his career under the guidance of Herbert Derrickson, winning his first outing as a two-year-old in Manchester, Tennessee. After a great two-year-old season, Jim would win his first outing as a three-year-old. He was then purchased by Harold Roberts. 
Harold won a competitive amateur class with him, then turned the reins over to trainer Blaise Picard, who would win both the World Championship and World Grand Championship three-year-old classes. This would be followed by Kendra Myers winning the amateur four-year-old Grand Championship, and then Jen would go on to win World Championships in both amateur and open show pleasure divisions. With World and World Grand Championships in both open and amateur divisions, the decision was made to stand this talented black stallion in honor of the man who saw his greatness, Harold Roberts. A Jen Dwin is now standing at Sugar Creek in Shelbyville, Tennessee. Make an appointment to breed your mare today, 931-680-0897. Tired of paying for monthly telephone service, expensive long-distance bills, and all those crazy taxes? Are you sick of spending money on telephone equipment, maintenance contracts, and service calls, all for a phone system that shackles you to 100-year-old technology and your desk? Stop it. It's time to ship your phone system to the cloud. What can the cloud do for you? Bring together remote offices, workers, and employees in the field. Make sure that you'll never miss calls by delivering them to multiple devices. Modernize faxing by allowing multiple faxes to be sent and received at once. And deliver to email. Get your voicemail messages instantly through email, too. And take advantage of an endless supply of customizable features. Host My Calls can deliver the cloud. All of this technology with low upfront costs and not one penny in capital expense. It's time for a phone solution you'll truly love from Host My Calls. Call the number below. The Tennessee Walking Horse is a perfect horse to bring a family together for fun-filled days and nights of competition. From the youngest and the smallest in the family to the oldest and the biggest, the Tennessee Walking Horse provides an avenue for the entire family to enjoy competing together. If you ride one today, you will own one tomorrow. I don't want anybody to forget the winner circle. They have free shipping for any order over $100, and they do support our industry on a regular basis. So please remember the winner circle when you're getting your equine needs. It's Jerry Harris and Jim Fuller with the latest in the world of horses, including information and clips from area shows. More of What a Horse coming up. <laughs> You and I were talking about the fast show. Yeah. <laughs> we're fixing to go do some videos, show some videos from there. They had a good show. They they did. Had... I, th I think I think um, Easter weekend might have hurt them a little bit on yep. on entries, and um, but it was a good show. Sarah Smith does a a real good. I tell you, I was really impressed with this young man. That horse had never been in the ring. The first time it ever been showed. He's 16 years old. Really? Yes. And the horse or the rider? The, the rider. Okay. The riders, the rider, the horse. That's a four-year-old class, okay. Mark. That's what I thought, I mean. <laughs> but now wow. he, he is 16, and uh, they said, well, you want to show him, show him. She, he did. And here's Evening at the Palm and Lainey Mol Molinac, I believe is the way you pronounce her name. She did a great show, a great way of showing the horse. That's your medallion class. One of the few times you see a canter anymore. Well, I tell you, I, that's one thing I would love to see in academy classes, is them teaching them how to canter. Yeah. No matter flat shot or performance, teach them to canter. Um, yeah, these kids that do the, the medallion, not only you don't get prize money at the show, but the high point medallion winners get scholarships too. Well, that, and even if you're too young, you're not going to school right away, you're yeah. still building up that scholarship money for when you're ready. That's it. Right there is Da the Haas and Allie Jo Jacobs. Is you this pony. a new one? Oh, it's That's her pony. And Allie Joe now, she's she's a mess. But she she's learning, you win some and you lose some, and that's important for a young lady to learn.
right there is I am big enough. This was reserved pony winner. Maxine Beasley. Or Beth Beasley. Now them young ladies can flat ride. They can, and it's, it's really been fun to, and the same with Ellie Joe, just to watch them from lead line all the way up to, you know, what, what they are now. I tell you what impresses me about her more than anything. She wants to work and she wants to learn. Like these two yeah. girls, one of the twins was a little step ahead of the other, but the other one caught up with it. <laughs> I mean, they, these kids, they, they work hard. People don't realize that, that there's, you don't just jump on a horse and take off and be, be the best. It's gonna be hard to beat this one right here, though. Amateur <coughs> show pleasure, epic. I think they found their niche in show pleasure. Hey, that horse right there, he does not miss a lick. That's it in a nutshell. And a lot of times right now you get out there, he's in there by himself because just the way he goes. It's kind of like Godfather by Ultra Copy. There for several years, you couldn't beat that horse. I mean, he was just, age just caught up with him. And Megan can flat ride now. She, she's a good, she's a good jockey. Right here is up tight, Jose and Bruce McDonald. I do a lot of dealing with a lady in Atlanta about uh, media, like on the STGN Stream Sports Network. She loves that horse. Huh. Yeah. She, she, I'll be talking to her. She says, "Well, what about uptight Jose?" Bruce is a good jockey. First time I saw him show was in Fedville and his girth broke. <laughs> and, and he stopped and I, I was hollering, don't step off. <laughs> don't yeah. step off. Here's Boyger and Jimmy McConnell for Paul and Tiffany Simons. Have you met Paul Simons? I have. I've met I've met them in the office and um and at a horse show and um they, they're really good owners. They, they um they're, 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 I've talked to him on the phone. I have not been able to meet him in person, but now he's super, to me, talking to him, he, he's a joy to talk to. Well, I feel like every time I, every time I look, they've bought something else, so they, um, they, they're a good addition to, to the horse business. Well, you can tell he enjoys riding. Yeah, now, that he, he does. does. You, you can tell it. He, did, we're, he won somewhere this spring, didn't he? I mean, I feel like everybody he, in there he, was behind he, him. He's been reserved a couple of times that I've seen. And I, well, maybe he was reserved and everybody was letting them know they wanted him to win. Well, and I feel like everybody was so behind him in that class. That, oh, Lord, yeah. Right here's another one. Jackie Watley on All About Jose. Hey, that horse right there, she told me, she said, Jerry, you just don't know how much fun he is to ride. And a lot of people, when, when they start riding these horses, they just, uh, I mean, that, that's all they want to do. Well, and, she, and she's done it for yeah. 50 years, maybe? Yeah. I mean, since the 70s. She said that she's been, look, showing at the celebration. She may have started before that. Right here, Brain Power. Jake Jacobs. Amateur counter class. That, that right there, that's a great horse. Once they uh, gilded him, Everything changed about that horse. And that's a prime example why you want them registered. And up belongs to Allie Joe, but she lets him ride it. Yeah, I mean, let's, <laughs> let's be honest. It's right all of it's Allie Joe's. <laughs> yep, right there's a heck of a horse. Cole Hahn and Allie Joe Jacobs. You're 11 and under. I watched that horse. He never missed a lick.
She can flat set one, can't she? She sure can. And here's Boone's Gin and Jimmy McConnell from Mike Floyd. Mike Floyd's a super good one. His uh, niece one uh, got a reserve over at Rock Bow this week. Oh, really? When they called her number, I thought she was going to fall off her horse. <laughs> you know, she ain't shown, shown in a while, and I, I I'm, glad to see, I'm glad to see her back in the ring. Well, they, when they called her number out, you, you could tell it was shocked her. <laughs> We all time giving Jimmy down the road. He snuck up behind me the other night and popped me. I'm telling you, he doesn't know how strong he is. <laughs> Brutal. Mr. True Blue, that one right there with R.M. Kelly, I'm telling you. Now, he was getting it done. This, I mean, this is, he, he made such a phenomenal show that night. Hey, he, he was ugly. That R.M. Kelly, I need to, interview him because he, he's one of the young guns. Yeah. Get this stuff done. He is, I don't know how long he's had that horse, but I mean, he is, he's got him dialed in. He looks great. Well, I think he had him and they sold him. Okay. And then, but they had to move him back. You know, some trainers get along real well with horses and right. some trainers don't. Yeah. And I mean, that's just the way it is. Here's a Super Bowl MVP and B.B. Beasley. He made a good show. I'm kind of wondering if that horse wouldn't measure pony. I'm just saying, wondering how old that horse is. I feel like he's been around a while. Yeah. That was clever. Did you hear what the announcer did there? The MVP of the class. <laughs> <laughs> right there he is. There's Paul. Maybe that's what I was thinking about. But I mean, he was either here or the Smokies. Was he in the Smokies? Yeah, but he was reserved at the Smokies. Okay, it, I think the Smokies were. I'm but thinking he, about, he but does. People really got behind him, and I thought, man, he. I was like, man, everybody, you know, is behind this guy. Well, he, he the guy can ride, yeah. and, he, and he's making some good shows. Yeah. yeah, he really is. And see that horse, Jimmy is, is won twice with that horse. Okay. And Paul has been reserved twice with him. Right there's Joe Pond, Winky Groover. He walked horse state class winner. Strickland and Porterfield. If you you know Jane, Shane, I do. He's a super good guy. Getting it done. That's all that matters is getting it done, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> we can stop by every now and then and eat breakfast. A bunch of us eat breakfast at Midway. Okay. And we, we have some good conversations. <laughs> <laughs> some, of, some of them get heated. All right, we're going to go to the extravaganza. CJ is giving us the quick move over here. And right there, Queen Elizabeth and Connor. Then the. Oh, I'm glad I won't announce this show. Vandy Nib. Then. I can't pronounce it. But I, I can tell you, uh, Jerry can. But that, that's his second blue this year. There's a video that Jerry Dam did where Jerry, he's got three lead line ponies. He had all three of them lined up in the cross tie, side by side, parked out. Jerry Williams, we thank you, sir. He handles Queen Elizabeth. A little cameo by 
Doug Shiflet there, yeah. so I guess filling in for Shane. Mm -hmm. Van Dibben. Dibben. Van Dibben. <laughs> I, can, I can do this one. It's the medalist. <laughs> Eli Cunningham. <laughs> You can sit and talk to James Wilson about this young man. And uh, he and I got talking about him on the phone before I knew it. We'd done talked 30 minutes about doing different things. Yes. Uh, he's got, he told me he had 15 grandkids. I told him I only had four. Wow. It just took him longer to tell me about his than it did me tell him about mine. I mean, if he'd get all those grandkids showing, that would, that would Ooh. make us rest better about the, having more youth riders. That's that. fact. <laughs> He said they're all in, in different things, just like mine, every yeah. one of them. You know, it's tough now. That, you know, these travel teams and stuff, I mean, you pretty much, used to you could do a lot of different things. Now you've got to commit to something pretty Oh, yeah. Right here, your two-year-old Baron Gilding class. Now, it was a good one. They better watch it or before they know it, Eli will be in there with them. <laughs> Holly Gray took the blue with Tanner Burks for Shane Porterfield, which that was a good horse. M M Miss State Champion Jimmy McConnell for Beverly Sherman. I rest my case, Nick Papkin for Josh and Beth Lowell. But Holly Gray, I like that name. You know that Tanner Burks is a good rider too. He, uh, I've seen him sometimes when I thought he deserved better but uh, he, he's won his share. That's a good filly right there. Thanks for losing part of the tail strap, though. Park Performance Amateur Class. I'm You Know and Jake Jacobs takes the blue for the Jacobs family. Popcorn Sutton and Jacob Mom was reserved. Parole from Hard Times, Sister Milligan. In Chill of the Night, Bart McWater finished out the ribbon. I told Sister this, so uh, it's no it's no huge secret or anything, but when this issue of The Voice comes out, we did a profile on all of our youth um, board members uh -huh. um, for the Youth Association, and one of the questions we ask them is, you know, what, you know, amateur rider or trainer do you most admire? And when, it, when you get this issue in a couple of weeks, I want you to look at how many of them said Sister Milligan. And I don't know that they even know her. I'm going to tell you why. Watch Sister ride. Oh, I agree. And she just, she is just out there having a good time, period. Win, lose, she, or draw. That's she, it. She's she, just she having a ball. It. She told me one time she would show in every class. I told her, I said, sister, they ain't going to let you in the stick horse class. I don't care what you <laughs> Let me tell you, she, I, she shows in a lot of them. If she'd go in the lead line class, they'd let her. <laughs> I'm serious. I believe she would. Right there he is. I am, you know, and Jake Jacobs for the Jacobs family. Park Performance Amateur winner. Congratulations. To the Scribner crew and to the Jacobs family here on this win, our amateur Park Performance Walking Champion. I am, I know that is. Jake Jacobs is up. 
was a walking head shaking. Mm. Beautiful horse too. Congratulations, looking good, sir. Here's your four-year-old open. Honor image, and Tanner Burks took the blue in this one for Shane Porterfield. Badge, and Jerry Beatty for Dan and Susan Calvin. All his own, Knox Blackburn, Bruce and Robin McDonald, and Contour, Blake Sims for Tim and Laura Cochran. I thought that badge was awful good. And that, that right there is plum good too. There's some good horses in there. Knox, I'm, I am tickled that Knox Blackburn is back showing. <laughs> I was tickled when he came back last year and I told him, I said, hey, just, you, you look up and, and some of the good trainers that were here, they're not here anymore and you wonder where they went. I don't remember that horn going on off that night. There's always one. Always one. <laughs> Every now and then I'll sit wrong and my butt hit the button and raise my hatch. <laughs> People see all that equine stuff I keep in the back end of my <laughs> Nice horse right there. That is too. I was in Massachusetts over the weekend and had a had a rental car. Um, it's you know, it's one that you know you don't have to turn the key or anything. Right. You just push the button. All right. Well, I swear I thought I turned that thing off, and I got off, went into the hardware store, and came back out, and the car was still running. <laughs> it didn't beep at you. I don't think so. If it did, I wasn't paying attention. Mine, mine beeps at you. you do. <laughs> Honors image and Tanner Birch for Shane Porterfield, four-year-old Open winner. Shane told me, he said, Jerry, I really got a good four-year-old. I think I've got a chance of winning this class. He was, he was telling me about it being reserved. I said, I remember that. But he's right. He just kept getting better, especially when he turned around. All right, coming down the west side, our four-year-old walking champions tonight. That, that's the thing Tanner about Burke those that, that you just Honor push the image. button. I was, I was taking the turn the Virginia Stewart's car Murphy's around far this morning Mr. and got in the BMW. And it was uh, automatic. I could not get that car to go in the reverse. <laughs> I, I, I told her, I said, I don't know how to run this thing. It's one of them expensive, but it's a BMW. <laughs> I got a Ford. <laughs> All right. What are we going to do? We got to go to commercial. Is that it? I think we do. We'll be right back after this. Am I right? Yeah, we got to go to the commercial. We'll be right back after this short pause. I had a knee replacement, so they've got me in life care, which I'm very, very thankful for. I couldn't garden, I couldn't do my flower beds, I can't chase my little dogs. I have been in several therapy sessions for knees and back, and that's the best therapist I believe I've ever been to. It's tremendous because I'm able to walk again, but if it wasn't for the care, I wouldn't be where I am. Let us champion your recovery. Life Care Center of Tullahoma. 
You know, my friends think I know everything there is to know about the walking horse industry. And I do know a lot, but not everything. I do know one thing, though. My father told me I could find out anything I needed to know about this industry by going to walkinghorsereport.com. And you know what? He was right. Everything from single night shows to multi night shows, sibling and progeny searches, Ryder Cup standings, stallion reports. They even have a calendar of shows for the entire year and all the current news. It's all right there at the tip of my fingers when I go to walking horsereport.com. You know, they could do it themselves, but I don't think I'm going to tell them. Let's just keep them wondering how I know so much. More of What a Horse coming up. <laughs> Welcome back. We got just one more clip of video and then we're going to be out of here. All right. We'll be on our, you'll be on your way back. I'll be on my way doing something else. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's go to our final clip of the, of the show and watch some more extravaganza video. I've said it a bunch of times, but this is one of my favorite horses. And I, I like him because he's lit up. And when you come in, you don't have no problem finding him or remembering him. And even Jake Jacobs was in there on a good one too. But this born a maverick and Bob Adcock stole the show. Jake was in there on Ram Jam CTF. That's a good horse. Deal me a hand, Libby Dowd. And yes, ma'am, I am Amy Mays. Jake was talking to Bob after his old with and said, Bob, I didn't see one thing wrong with your horse. Bob said, what was that? He said, I wasn't on it. <laughs> <laughs> That's one way to look at it. So this is the amateur three-year-old class. Yeah, this is your amateur three-year-old class. That's a good horse that, that, that uh, Libby Dow was on. Back to the Deal floor. me a hand. Thank you, now that right there, I just, the I really road. like that horse. I like that, that, you know, that right there reminds me of what? Mountain Man. <laughs> Look at him. He's a big horse too. Mountain Man was a big, Mountain Man was what, about 17 hands? He's huge. That's, that was, that Mountain Man is one of the, was that 1980, 81? That's one of the first horses I like remember cheering for, really getting behind the celebration. Amateur three year old winner, born a Maverick, and Bob Adcock. Born Bob Adcock. He's gone on a three week vacation. Oh, has he? Yes, sir, down to the Keys. Good for him. He told me, he said, I'll thank of you. <laughs> yeah. I hope so. Yeah. Bob, Bob's a good one for the industry, too. Well, they, I mean, he's been in a long time. I mean, he, oh, Lord. He's third years. generation. His granddad yeah. was in it. Of course, his, his dad, Odie Edcock, yeah. had, what was that pleasure? I mean, one of the first, like, big-time pleasure horses, Ravens mm -hmm. in Touch of Class, was that yeah. it? Something like that. I, uh, hard for me to remember back that far. I'm but, getting old. But, I mean, they, they, he trained him himself, and they would come down here every year. They, they've been in a long time. Nope. They did good. Here's your open specialty. And I'm here to tell you now, I am honors and Link Webb. You just watch him go around through there and you'll understand why he won the blue. Playing Jen, Bill Calloway was reserved. Jen's Black Seventh, Jackie Byram, and Motown's undercover boss, Mike Overcast, finished out the ribbon. But right there, Link just, you, you talk to Link and everything just on a level key with him. I say, made a good show, Link. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was some good horses in that class, though. Bill was on one, too. You notice it's later and the crowd is not as enthusiastic. Uh huh. Please, back to the flat wall. There's a maverick. We invite you to the east rail for the line -off. Good horse. 
that not all shows, but most shows, if you watch about nine o'clock, you'll see it starts thinning out. Yeah. Well, they, that's why a lot of them now are trying to get it over with earlier and earlier. But if you get a show over by 10 or 10.30, that, that's a good time to end it. But we have so many classes or shows that have so many classes. So I feel like four hours is a good time. Yeah. I am Honors and Don Collins. Owner for Don and Lucky Collins, I'm sorry. Link Webb in the saddle. Uh, have a look. Over on the west side, our open walking champion. Link did a good job. Link Webb is up. Congratulations. I'll tell you what, now, he's one that works. He'll come in for breakfast, but he gets it to go. <laughs> he does. He, I think he's eat breakfast with us once, maybe twice. Most of the time he comes in, he's got a little sack and he's out the door. Getting up there and getting her done. But that was. <laughs> This weekend, they, to me, they had a good show over there. The extravaganza. It all looks that, like it. All that, those, that money went will go to the Christmas in July show. Okay, the one so, Fourth of July weekend. Right, right. They, Is it they, two they, nights, three nights again? It was yeah, three last yeah. year, right? And they, uh, they named their judges. Uh, where is it? Uh, Christmas in July will be Paul Robbins, Chris Bobo, and Johnny Puckett. So, I won't be. Having one show then, because I eat breakfast with Johnny most mornings. <laughs> that, so, that disqualifies you. That that disqualifies breakfast. me. Well, it, <laughs> it would. It ain't. I try not to show in front of anybody. I spend a lot of time around. <laughs> uh, they it, it just doesn't get. But we're going to work on having the academy, and uh, I know that you've got quite a few calls about it. I know a lot of people have talked to me about it, wanting to get involved. And there's a lady in Winchester called Cat Die. You know her? I don't. I do, I do now because you've told me about her. But. 30, she's got over 30 students. She said we're a thousand percent in. Said we'd love to come to academy shows. We need. We we got to build our bench and our pipeline for these youth. I mean, we've got some good youth riders, but you take out trainers' kids, and um, uh, our numbers are, are dwindling there. We need to. Well, we need to fill those classes. We need to. We, we need to go. We used to go to around the schools quite a bit because I did that with with the breeders, and we would teach them, t tell them about the horses and stuff. Yeah. And it wouldn't hurt to do that again. But maybe we will. And but we'll get together. We'll have you back over here, and we'll talk further. And maybe by the time we, we get you back, we'll have a, a little start on academy, and we can. Start enticing people to get busy and come on out and ride a horse. Yep, that'd be great. That'd be well, great. Well, Mark, I really appreciate you coming over and taking time because enlightening the people on what's going on. And we will see everybody again next week with another episode of What Horse. Thanks for having me. Thank you. <laughs>